Hey everybody, I wanted to give it a couple of days before I fired this one up. I did a top 10 of my Mike Medano collection, I think now a couple of weeks ago. So I'll include a, a link to that video at the in the corner and in the description if you want to check that out. And I wanted to do a top 10 on the rest of the collection. So this is the top 10 cards that are not involving Mike Medano, so in the rest of the collection. And not surprisingly, it's going to be very vintage heavy. But before I get into that, in just a second, a couple of quick... Uh, points of what's going to come up is I've obviously got the video that I'm doing today and then I'm probably going to have uh, I've got an idea in mind that I'm kicking around for another video that I may do if it happens it will come up probably on Thursday so I'm kicking it around and if I record it in the next day or two then it'll be up on Thursday on the channel and uh, it'll be one of my usual kind of talking things and then uh, the usual pickup video will probably what I'll probably do is I'll record it on Friday and then I'll put it up on Saturday probably Saturday afternoon that way I don't have to rush it uh, and that way it doesn't go out in the middle of the night. Although some people like that. But uh, I want to try to get it out at a reasonable time where most people can at least catch it at the time, right around the time it comes out. So that'll be kind of the plans for the channel. Uh, guaranteed video on Saturday for pickups because I definitely got some pickups. And then uh, probably a video on Thursday if everything goes according to plan. So like I said, these are my top 10. Quick round rules based on the last one. Same rules as before. All the Medanos are excluded from this entire conversation. I already did a top 10 on those. But these are everything else in the collection. It is very vintage heavy. And these are not the most valuable cards in my collection. These are not the rarest cards in my collection. These are the top 10 favorites, according to me. Now, real quick, I was uh, narrowing down the last couple. It was really tricky, so I do have a couple of honorable mentions. So the first one I'll do is including this one. This is a 55 Bowman, Hank Aaron. It is a PSA 4. It's a MC for miscut. Obviously, the centering at top to bottom there. But it is a nice, clean-looking card. Second year Hank Aaron. Very cool. Nice clean card. It's a great image. Still love the 55 Bowmans. There's one of my honorable mentions. Just fell outside the top 10. This one as well. I bought this one raw and got it graded myself. So this is a 1954 Bowman, Willie Mays. I actually really enjoy the uh, 54 Bowmans. They're kind of plain for some people, but, uh, you know, with the pastel and the whole uh, facsimile autograph. Especially compared to the, the beautiful cards in the 53, but... I still think they have their charm. The last couple of years of Bowman I enjoyed for what they were. 54 Bowman Maze. Another honorable mention, just outside the cut. And the last one, we'll finish off with another Hank Aaron here, just in the honorable mentions. So 1960 Tops. Now this one I picked up, this is a poor one, but you can see it's because of staining. So you can see you can make that out a little bit there. At some point I may get an upgraded copy of it, but... This one I've had in the collection for a while. So you can see the staining went all the way through. It's some kind of oil or something. That's been on the card for a while. But that's an honorable mention. 1960 Tops is one of, uh, I think it's one of my favorite sets of the 60s. I, it's just got a good combination of colors and everything. But that's 1960 Tops, Hank Aaron. Last honorable mention. And now we're going to get to the top 10. All right, the top couple of them were very easy for me, but I tried to uh, I tried to put a little variety in it, but as I went through it, I realized there wasn't going to be a lot of variety. So like I said, it's going to be very vintage heavy, so you already got a taste of that. So coming in at number 10 is a 1970 Tops Nolan Ryan, PSA 1.5. So this is part of the set that I've been working on for years. I'm down to just needing some of the high numbers, but this is one of the key cards that I had in the collection for some time now. So I decided to get it graded so that it would be there as part of the collection. And of course, uh, Nolan Ryan is a high number in this year. Card number 712. From his uh, stint with the New York Mets back in the early part of his career. And, I, and he was on the uh, Miracle Mets championship winning team of 1969. I don't think he realized that he would keep pitching for like another 25 years and never come back to a championship ever again. Number eight is one of a handful of modern cards that I have on here. And it's certainly not the most valuable one on this thing, on this list, but it's kind of cool because I just like the way it looks. So this is from Flawless 2017. So this is from the Carlos Delgado collection that I've been working on. And it's a Flawless patch out of 15. So they've got a couple of different uh, variants in terms of different foil colors. But just look at this patch from the Marlins. I'm not even that interested in the Marlins Delgado cards, but when I saw this one, the patch, I had to pick it up. It's a nice big patch window, and it gives you a nice, uh, solid multicolor patch. That's just a good-looking card. So this one uh, kind of falls into that definition I gave you. Not necessarily the rarest, although out of 15 is pretty rare. Not necessarily the most valuable, but just the uh, top 10 coolest cards to me. 
Something else can certainly knock this one off, but I think as a modern representative, this is a pretty good one. So there you go. Not all vintage, it's just gonna be pretty heavy in vintage. All right, this next one falls back in line. So now this time we're gonna introduce our first hockey card at number eight from 1954 Parkhurst. We gotta have Maurice the Rocket Richard. Now, as you can see, a lot of my vintage is low condition because that's kind of the way that I, uh, I was able to collect it, especially when I was younger. Uh, it's, you know, getting a poor condition card is probably the easiest way to actually be able to get a, your hands on it. Although a PSA one can, can look pretty good depending on, like this one isn't a terrible example. I've definitely seen much worse. And I've always had a bit of an affinity for the 54 Parkers. And the big star players all had uh, kind of this design to designate them as kind of uh, all-stars. Pretty sweet looking card. Number seven is uh, probably my second to last quote-unquote modern card, and I'll explain that one in a second. But number seven is 1998 Donner's Crusade. So this is another one from Del Delgado Collection. It gives me a nice excuse to show this one again. This one's great just because of the shine. It is a tougher 90s insert for sure, but these ones are just very attractive. So this is the green version of the Crusade. You got the nice foil going on. So these ones were number 250. Not the rarest, certainly, but these are definitely tough. Hopefully you can make that out with all the colors and the pattern in the background and everything. Just a great looking card. Next one is card number six, a relatively recent edition, not that long ago. But this one is from 94 Parkhurst. So this was a uh, kind of a retro themed autograph, one of the early uh, pack pulled autos that you could have. Well, it might've been a redemption now that I think about it, but anyway. So it's a Gordy Howe autograph on card. Just a nice clean design, beautiful looking card. And for me, certainly a worthy card to be at number six. Like I showed you, number to 956. So there you go. Gordie Howe, on card autograph, one of the early uh, certified autographs of Gordie Howe. Okay, now we enter into the top five. So following up the last card, this one seems rather appropriate. Uh, a fairly recent edition. So this is from 1954 Tops. So this is my 1954 Topps Gordie Howe card. So authentic altered. As I mentioned in the video where I picked this up, this is uh, altered because of the trimming, but still a nice, good look, clean looking example. This is kind of a holy grail card in the hockey card world. But it tells you what I think about some of the cards that are coming up as terms of personal favorites. But this one definitely is a personal favorite. Had to be in this top 10 and it made the top five. So it's up there. This top five is gonna be pretty hard to crack, I'll say. So here you go, 54 tops, Gordie Howe, card number five. All right, now we're getting into the tough ones here. So this is a 1952 Mantle, but not that 52 Mantle, it is the 1952 Bowman Mantle. It's not as much during on the channel these days, but I was very much a vintage card collector and I still am. There's some sets I'm still working on, but I kind of work on them quietly in the background, but I haven't had the chance to pick up many in a while. But this one here was one I definitely wanted to have in my collection before the price got exorbitant, even for the low uh, grid examples. And I'm pretty happy with what I paid for this one. Although I don't remember the exact amount, I know that uh, I wouldn't have been able to pull that price today. So if you're gonna have a 52 tops, a 52 mantle, for most people, this is probably the, uh, the most attainable one. There you go, 52 Bowman mantle. That was number four. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier that I love those late 50s Bowmans. So the 52 Bowman Mantle was there a second ago. But if I get to my number three, like I said, I just like the way that these came in. And they're a little underrated, in my opinion. So 54 Bowman here is going to be the Mickey Mantle for 54 Bowman. This is an off-center example. But I just like the image. I just thought it was a really cool looking card. Like I said, I don't mind the pastel, you know, color and everything. Basically a mid-50s Mantle. You can't go wrong with that. So that cracks my top three. You're gonna see a recurring theme with this with this last three, but it's just the way it is. So this one is from uh, probably my favorite set of all time. 
So this is the 56 tops. So if we're going to do 56 tops, we got to talk about the card that I lusted after for a long time before I was able to get in the collection. And keeping with the theme of lower condition cards, 56 tops mail with the lovely hole in the head version. There's a good chance at some point I'll buy an upgraded copy, but I'm probably going to keep this one no matter what, because this is my first uh, 56 tops mantle. So hole in the head or not, I wanted this one for a very long time when I started collecting. So I was more than happy when I got my hands on it. And obviously you got damage up here as well. So like I said, you, we keep these uh, kind of cards here. Sentimentality is uh, what keeps this one around. But it is a classic card in my opinion. Again, sticking to kind of that mid-50s mantle thing. So that is card number two. And the number one card, so like I said, 56 tops is my favorite set. But this one comes a very close second. So this one's the only SGC card on the list, but nonetheless, just an iconic card in its own right. If I can't have a 52 tops mantle and I have a 52 Bowman already covered in the top 10, I gotta have the one that is closest to it in terms of proximity. So this is the 53 tops Mickey Mantle. And to me, that's just a classic card. The 53 tops with all the images and all the uh, all the art that goes around with it. And at this point, you're still doing the larger form factor, which uh, they stopped doing after 56. So I think it's part of the reason 56 worked for me. Right up until 55, they were competing with Bowman. 56 was the first uncontested set. One of the most beautiful sets, in my opinion. But this is one of the ones that helped kind of bury Bowman. This, is, this was their competition to the 53 Bowman set. I will still give the nod to the 53 Bowman for the beautiful color images, but... This was not a bad. Uh, this was not a bad counter by Tops that year. It's a beautiful looking card. So there you go. That's the one we'll finish off with. A classic card in its own right, and that concludes my top ten personal favorite cards in the collection as of August 2020. And you never know. It's one of those things you're always looking for more grails all the time and maybe something will crack the top 10 next year and we'll see if it does. I'll revisit this with another video. But in the meantime, that's my number one. Any comments or questions are always welcome in there. Otherwise, thanks very much and I'll catch you in the next video.